It's 9 o'clock. It's Monday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's a little overcast and rainy here in Tampa Bay, but I'm sure it's sunshiny wherever you happen to be in your heart. It is um, it is the day after Mother's Day. We hope that all the mothers had a fantastic day yesterday and um, that you're looking forward to a happy and productive, uh, prosperous week at, Week this week. It's, it's time for Real Talk with Devin Will. Uh, I, I trust that you are ready and you are, are are just looking forward to an exciting and an invigorating program. Good morning. <laughs> hey. Good morning, everyone. I'm not a morning person, so <laughs> but um, time to get back in the gear of things. Um, happy Mother's Day to everyone out there that uh, for yesterday. Um, moms are very special in this world, and we deserve to be treated special on that one day out of the year. Um, we're glad to be back today on a, a rainy Monday morning here in Tampa. Well, in Florida, it looks like from what I saw on the radar, it's like all over Florida. And we're in for the week, it looks like. So, but we needed some rain. It's kind of our yard is like crusty and crunchy. There's no grass there. So there's ground, just dirt and dirt there's is a little grass. That's I think crunchy. there's I think those are weeds. <laughs> but if you but if you grow your weeds the right height and you can stay the, the, the a, a far enough distance away, looks like grass from Google Earth. But <laughs> it's actually just weeds. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, it we have, uh, and when we live in Florida, um, basically all of our water for everything comes from rainwater. So uh, it's it's important that during this this pre hurricane um, season that we get some water. It, it's starting to get into the um, it's starting to get into the rainy season. Really, our rainy season is is, is in the summertime. As a lot of you who watch already know, but I like when it rains at night. That way, I have to be out in it but that's really not the pattern. The pattern is that it's going to start raining at, at three in the afternoon um, like it always does here. So it, it is nice to get a little rain, get whatever little pollen is out of the air and hopefully out of our, our, our sinuses. Uh, so what's on the docket today, huh? Well, first of all, I'd like to wish some happy birthday to some of our listeners out there. Uh oh, we have birthdays? Uh, yes. Um, LaRonda. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. She's happy one of our special listeners. She's always you. on, always happy commenting. Birthday. The only flaw with you, LaRonda, is that you're not a Florida State fan. <laughs> but you can get shots for that. There, there is treatment. But there happy treatment. birthday. Anyway. Happy belated Mother's Day. And Elizabeth, um, Julie, who is a friend of ours here in Tampa. We um, went to church together. Happy birthday to you if you're out there listening. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Ha oh. Hey, it's Janet. Enough. I like that. <laughs> well, we don't want to have to pay for the song. No. Because <laughs> they won't be getting their money. <laughs> Just saying. All right. So, what 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 are we on today? Our topic for today. Um, did you put it in there? I it, did. Infidelity. Yes, and we touched on infidelity a little bit in um, some of our talks about uh, uh, having um, opposite sex friends. <laughs> And infidelity is what having opposite sex friends uh, secretly or anything like that can turn into when you have opposite sex or same sex, if you're interested in the same sex. But um, <laughs> that's true. I guess it happens. <laughs> it happens. I'm old. I guess it happens. That In this world, we have to be realistic and it can happen. Um, it, I think it would be hard to be in a same sex relationship because you, you know, girls and girls, you have girlfriends and what happens if you get attracted to your girlfriend and you are married, it, that can be a, a, an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Things are, th things in that, in that realm are a lot more complicated. Yes. Than we I won't guess, go there right today. Than they used That's to be. Not, not something that we're going to go Very, there. very, very, very confused. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 
But um, infidelity is an issue that uh, happens in marriages and in uh, partnerships. And we're going to touch on that today. And um, I looked up what the definition in the dictionary states that um, it's a state of being unfaithful to a spouse or other partner. So you can be, you can uh, have infidelity in just a friendship or, or a regular partnerships that you're in. That, you know, doesn't it, but, but it, 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 it does matter on, on the ground rules that you set up. And when we talk about that, like way back 13 or 14 weeks ago, um, whatever ground rules you set up to, the, to what your relationship is, um, that's how you, that's how you get to decide if someone's being unfaithful. Uh, we like to think about when we say unfaithful, we like to think about um, the marriage relationship where mm -hmm. somebody is married to someone, tells a whole church full of people that they're going to be faithful, which means they're only going to basically have sex with this one person, only going, going, to have, going to share their deepest, darkest intimacy, intimacy and then they don't do that. Uh, but that's not that's not the entirety of it. The entirety yeah. of it is that that sometimes that you have friends or you've had friends that have been disloyal, mm -hmm. that could have had your back and didn't. And sometimes you've been disloyal. Uh, and I'll and, and if I can, I'll, I'll I'll give you a short example mm -hmm. of that. You know that you're somebody's friend or they're your friend when they defend you when you're not there. Yes. You know, you when know someone starts talking trash, friend. when someone starts talking trash about you and you're not there and they defend you and not tell you about it, mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't run to you and go, oh, so-and-so was talking bad about you and I defended you. That's just gossip. Mm -hmm. So that's how you know when somebody will defend you when you're not there. And you hear about it later that, you know, they were talking about you and so-and-so said that wasn't true. She stood up for you. She was there for you. And you didn't even know that happened. That's a true friend because they're trying to protect you. As opposed to, 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 to the, the converse of that where um, the person that you think is your friend either is silent in that situation mm -hmm. or agrees with the person who's dogging you out. Um, they jump into the gossip and so, go on with it, and then and then usually they come back to you, girl. They were talking about you so bad, and <laughs> and and blah 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 blah. But they don't. They and forget so to was tell I. You. They forget <laughs> to tell you that they were a part of that conversation. I didn't defend you. So that that That's level fidelity that, in that, a friendship that really is. I just had disloyal friendship that, that that is basically infidelity and i think that people and we talked about this a little bit last night and the people who are are most likely to do that kind of stuff are them are most likely to be unfaithful in marriage in marriages or or, or other or, or other relationships business mm -hmm. relationships uh because it's a pattern yes it's kind of how you live your life it's how they how they live their lives and that's a that's a way to kind of figure out you know um if you can trust your spouse, um, if you look at how they treat their friends, how loyal are they to their, their friends? How loyal are they to their parents, to their family? Um, how loyal are they to their job? If they're always, you know, stealing and doing stuff and, and stucking and driving on their job, you know, and that's their livelihood, your, the two of you's livelihood, they, you're depending on that, and they are just careless about it, then they could possibly be careless about your relationship. Everything everything we do, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a musician by trade, so I've, I think I've always said everything that we do um, is basically um, practice. However you lead your life is practice. The things you say, how you say them, the relationship you have is practice. And whatever you practice, that's what you'll get good at. So if you practice shucking and jiving, you practice cutting corners um, here, you practice not being entirely um, loyal, loyal or, or, or faithful, that's what you practice all the time. And that's what ends up in you. In everything that you do in life. It, you know, it, 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 it will, you think you can compartmentalize stuff, but it doesn't. It, everything, how you are drips out um, for the good or the bad in every aspect of your life. So. Um, Debbie's right in that and sense. And you find people do this, you know, they say they are Christians, but they are people that are not loyal to their church either. 
they uh, they come sometimes, they don't come, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're gone. Or they don't find another church. They you know, they church find hop. they find another uh, they find another church um, after and and unfortunately we've seen a lot of that in our church lives together where people will will dedicate themselves to a ministry um, and then because it's uncomfortable or because it's not working out like they thought they were, it, it it was you you look up and there and they are out of there. It's just tail lights. It's all you see, and then and and then they refuse to communicate. They just disappear. Mm-hmm. Um, it's sad. What we know is that every relationship can can be diff- every relationship that you have, whether it's work, personal, romantic, everything can be tough from time to time. Um, but the people who are most like the people who I think are most likely to to cut and run um, in any kind of relationships. When it gets difficult, if it's not going to be fun and exciting and beneficial, overtly beneficial to them, um, all the people you have to watch out for, frankly. I don't know. I know that sounds a little harsh, but, <laughs> but it, it's just been it's just the been truth my experience. Is in the pudding. It's just been kind of our experience. You know, we we've seen a lot of people who are you know what who are supposed to be the church people, um, cut and run when it got tough. And then we see the fruit in their lives. They're doing that in other portions of their lives now. Their kids are doing it in certain portions of their other lives now. So it's it's I don't know. I ain't throwing rocks. I'm just pointing out the window. I'm just saying, oh, look over there. That's all I'm saying. I ain't pointing rocks. I ain't throwing no rocks. I ain't and we're it. not perfect. And I'm not perfect. No. But. We're not perfect. We're not saying that we do everything, but you have to look for characteristics in people. Um, and, and when, if you are saying that you are a Christian, then hurting people, hurting other people should not be in your regular way of life. I know we all make mistakes. We all, you know, have to decide, you know, if something isn't good for you, you got to decide to leave and that's your priority. But when you are committed, you you said that you were going to serve this, you were going to do this, you were going to be married to this person, then you have to to sometimes bite the bullet and stick with it, stay with it. Because sometimes you'll find that th- that if you can get through that rough, if you can get through, if you can get through that rough patch. Now again, it does not, and I've and I've already got a companion video out about about growing up in an abusive ho- um, household. It does not contain that you should take an ass whooping every Friday for, for 15 years or 15 minutes, really. Um, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about that. I don't want anybody to be, I don't want anybody to, 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 to misconstrue what we're saying. We're not talking about that. It's okay that you take an ass whooping every, no. and, you know, every Friday. Um, that's not what you we're talking about. You don't stay in a relationship that's abusive. Again, abusive follow the trend. Anyway. Follow the trend. <laughs> Follow trip, you know, and and I've said and I said this in my our companion video. The idea is that if he hits you, he will kill you. I'm and I, I'm so and I am so serious about that. If he hits you, that same guy will kill you. So that's not, not love the relationship mm-hmm. that you want to be in. Uh, and people and people get by and through a lot of things like we were talking about infidelity. People actually people relationships survive infidelity. Friendship relationships survive disloyalty. So, um, but I think a lot of it is is recognizing that and talking about that beforehand. What is going to be um, infidelity? This just probably be a multi, why we talk about this a number of times, maybe not in a row, but a number of times. And I've got in the comments that we we're, we're first going to talk about emotional infidelity because that's the one that is the slipperiest of slopes. Because we we all can kind of slip into that, um, depending on your personality. Because um, I had to change a lot of aspects of my personality once I knew that I was committed into this marriage. Because I'm I'm not gonna lie, I was a flirt. I love to flirt, and flirting can get you in trouble when you are in a relationship with somebody and you you know you think it's harmless. 
you're talking to somebody and uh, of the opposite sex and you're, you're giggling. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they can, and back and forth like that. And before you know it, this other person is thinking you're, you know, serious and you're just, just being nice and flirting. I don't flirt. Flirting is, can be a <laughs> I don't, don't flirt. Opposites attract, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I had to deal with that. That's something that I had to deal with and not uh, push the issue. Because before you know it, that flirting can go into, you know, uh, an emotional type of thing because you all are talking and joking and going on and stuff like that. You don't want to go too far into that because then it can go into an emotional type relationship and emotional relationships is, is infidelity. If you are sharing um, your feelings about your partner or your spouse with someone, you know, emotional that you that you know what they do or what they say things that are only between the two of you is is, is danger yeah um like i like it is in the um you know in, in, the, in the banner for the show it says uh who are you talking to and what are you talking about and who do you share your secret feelings with and who knows your inner thoughts when you start sharing what happens in your in your in your marriage relationships, um, the intimate stuff with other people, that's a big problem. That really is a big problem. And I understand that that that, that, that some people are in a condition by which um, it's tough because you don't you don't think you have anybody else. And that again is the slipperiest the slipperiest of slopes. Uh, because you think, well, we're just friends. We're just talking. We're just friends. Mm -hmm. um, well, and we've said before, and, and we've said before when we, when we talked about, especially um, having friends of the opposite sex, which is actually one of our most popular videos of, of, uh, at, at this point, both on Facebook and on YouTube. So, um, so it must be something that everybody is dealing with at some level. Um, that this is where things go from can easily go from zero to 60 before anybody really realizes it. Uh, because if you start bringing your troubles to people, people think that you, that you care about them enough. Mm -hmm. This is, this is why, this is why it's important. If you start bringing that level of intimacy to someone, they think that you feel for them because who else would share that kind of stuff? with me unless they, they care about, they care about me or they are me. or look and look at me differently than so, just somebody who you know waves a hand at work or something mm -hmm. or waves a hand at the fence at the, you know what how y'all doing you know yeah. if you are sharing that sort of information with somebody they it's it's, 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 it's obvious that they think that there's some connection there so you may just be venting because you're upset, because you're afraid or whatever, but you have to be really careful because you're building real, a relationship with somebody by sharing this That's relationship. That's not your partner. That isn't your partner. And that, I'm telling you, will not make things better unless that person who's your friend re grabs you and redirects you back at your partner. Mm-hmm. And if and, and if they don't do that, then that's a big danger sign. If they say you should be talking to the, you should be talking to your wife about this, man. You should be talking to your wife about this. You shouldn't be talking to me about it, or you should be talking to your husband about this. You shouldn't be talking to me about this. Don't tell me anymore. That's how you know who your friends are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how you know who you can trust. So, yeah, I, I think they, that the emotional infidelity um, is the again the slipperiest of slopes that can easily fall into other forms of infidelity that you may not be able to come back from. And it's important that you talk with your partner about this before you suspect them of doing anything. Um, you don't want to be in the middle of your marriage. And then, you know, for years and years, you've always saw your husband, um, when you go, you're in public. Sometimes they could, people do it, right? You're in public and you, your spouse is over, you know, you're at a party or something and he's over there talking and joking and, you know, he's the life of the party because he's flirting with all these women. 
and women love him because he's that way. And you put up with that for years. And then you think that, well, he's extra close with Cindy at work. Why is that? You don't want to talk with him about that after five years of marriage. And you've always felt that way. You need to, the first time that you see it, when things are not, you know, when you're not feeling all funny about it or something like that, the first time that you're feeling uncomfortable about things, talk then, you know, find out, you know, what do you consider to be infidelity? What do you think is cheating? Talk, talk about it before it gets, talk about it before it gets weird. Mm -hmm. um, because it's actually, because it, it's going to be, it, I mean, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be weird anyway. Yes. But um, the idea is talk about but it. If you're not suspecting them of something, it makes it a lot easier to talk about than if you, uh, you know. Because now you don't have to talk about particulars necessarily. Mm -hmm. You don't have to talk about individuals. A person. You don't have to talk about Cindy necessarily because <laughs> because Cindy may not even be the problem or the issue. May not ever may not have may have been the issue or the problem. May not ever be the issue or the problem. Mm -hmm. But you're just talking about it conceptually. Um, and and say you know what that sort of bothers me, and any idea is well are you jealous? Well yeah kind of, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. It just makes me or, or, or person you love or just say yeah it just sort of makes me feel a kind of way you know a, a, a kind of way. And um, again we talk about again video one um, is that more important than relationship? Is how you are or how you were more important than more important than a relationship that you like being the life of the party that you like that everybody gathers around you that you're the center of attention um is that more important to you than your relationship that you compliment other women more than you compliment your wife or you compliment your, your other men more than you do your husband guys never compliment other women on anything except if they can shoot a free throw <laughs> seriously <laughs> just don't do it just don't do it. I mean, and there's all sorts of politically correct reasons for not doing it that keep you out of trouble. Just in general, just in general, if you are in a a committed relationship, um, guys, listen to me carefully. I'm serious. Listen to me carefully. Don't do it. Just don't do it. First of all, it's not your place to compliment somebody on their dress, on their look. Um, it's not your place. That's for the person in their lives. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. It's out of order, and it's not your place. And I'm be honest with you. I'm, I'm not going to say that you don't notice because you do have eyes in your head that work, but they're not necessarily attached to your face, to your mouth. They're not. <laughs> keep that. Keep that bit. That that tidbit to yourself. Don't go up to Janice and go, "You're looking good today, girl." Only if she's just come from the hospital for six weeks with chemo. <laughs> and then maybe not. So just, just I mean, there are, there are certain things that you just don't do. You just don't do. Yes. Oh, look. Look at that. Opening an, an, an embassy in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks, Marco. A little notice from our friend Marco Rubio. Hey, Tamara. What's up, girl? So what you got? She, so, has, no, she has notes there. She has notes there to beat the band. You guys can't see. She has notes there. It's like I a, like to be like prepared. A it's like, like a college I, thesis, like a master's thesis over there. I am a very, I like to be prepared. I don't like to be caught off guard. I He does better just off the cuff. And on the weekend, I'm busy studying and looking and doing, right. and and I want to be prepared. And a then a rule. lot of times I talk Calcul off the cuff. Calculator. <laughs> but he does all of his stuff out off the off his head. That, which is I'm, which is scary, isn't it? Which is just frightening. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but I'm a note taker. I can't take notes. I could, I, I could have a bad handwriting. By the time by the time it gets cold, I can't read it anyway. So, you know, you start writing and it looks good, like the first sentence, and then the set, but the second sentence, and by the third sentence, like our, <laughs> like I wrote on my foot, <laughs> my left foot. So, as we continue with the emotional infidelity, um, 
and the 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 thing that you have to do when you're talking with your spouse about this and um like i said do it when it's not not uh, uh an issue but find out what they think infidelity emotional infidelity is because um if they're on their third or fourth marriage with you and you know that kind of is a sign <laughs> <laughs> that this person may may not think that it, there's such thing as an emotional relationship with someone. Now people change. They you, do. You know what people people do change. I mean, I mean you and just because somebody's been married three times doesn't mean that they're the fourth the fourth time isn't the charm. Um no. But fo but follow the trends. Follow the trends and especially if they've been married a lot or before or even before um, these are all conversations that you have to have because, first of all, they don't want to fail again, mm -hmm. and you don't want to fail at all. Mm -hmm. So it's I, I I think it's perfectly okay at that point if you if you're going to get into a situation with someone who's already been married to go ahead and have those to have those conversations okay, before you get married. I think that that's fair. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it may not be as fair with someone who's never been married before, but for someone who's been married before, for sure. Um, and depending on how their first marriage ended, I think all of those conversations should be on the table because I, I really, that's why counseling is so important because I really believe that, that, that they don't want to fail, that they don't want to fail again either. Yes. Uh, they don't want to have the fifth or sixth or seventh, eighth misses somebody either. Nobody wants to go through that. So it's okay to have those. I think it's okay to have those conversations about what do you think you know emotional infidelity is because i i think it can i think emotional infidelity can be every bit as devastating in a relationship yeah sometimes as, that hurts more as actual infidelity that we're talking i mean i want to talk about that later about sexual infidelity that's part two that was saturday no Okay, just I'm just I'm just curious. <laughs> uh, I'm always I'm 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 a, I'm a curious fellow. Um, it's not going to be X-rated. No, nothing. Nothing that we do is X-rated. No, but well, nothing it's not we do. Gonna be nothing adult. we do in front of y'all is X-rated. <laughs> it's not going to be. I'm just saying what I'm just saying. Nothing we do in front of y'all is X-rated. <laughs> nothing we talk about in front of y'all is X-rated ever. Um, but um, it's um, but it it can be more it can be more damaging. Um, an emotional relationship because the idea of a marriage relationship is not just to share uh, a space or food or bills or our or, or vehicles, but to share lives. And when you decide to share your life with somebody else, a third party, Dave Reynolds in the house, um, that becomes a serious, that, that becomes a serious problem. Um, and can be dev and can be devastating when you go home and say, "Hey, what happened?" and and everybody's conversation is, "Oh, nothing it was okay," mm -hmm. but you're spilling your guts, your life, with someone else. To Cindy at work. To Cindy at work, or you know what, or Billy, or you know, or, or whomever. That's problematical. That's problematical. Um, and it's easy again. I think I, I think that that that's why I call it the slipperiest the slipperiest of slopes, uh, the emotional um, infidelity, and how we must continuously be on guard in our own in our own lives, in our own selves, in our own behaviors, and how we address other people outside you know outside the marriage. Um, what kind of relationship do you have with them? What do you guys talk about? Talk about the lightning getting blown out last night, six to two. Uh, I think that's safe. I think that's safe ter territory. Who is that? Sammy. Hey, Sammy. Good morning. Um, golly. David. Yeah, just when we're just when we're getting ready to close. Getting ready out. to go. Y'all show up late, <laughs> late, late. Good morning, everyone. We thank you. <laughs> Thanks. You can always go back and late. watch this video, <laughs> and you can always go to YouTube, subscribe to our channel. And watch some of our older videos. Um, 
we would like for you to participate in this. Give us some comments and and uh, ideas, topics that you want you're interested in. If you're in relationships, and again, it's not just marriage relationships. We would like to talk about um, friendships and partnerships, uh, dating. business, dating, anything that you have questions about. Um, feel free to contact us. Yeah, just to, to drop a comment, I mean, in this section um, for this, this video, if you have experienced emotional infidelity, whether it led to anything else or not, we like to hear about it um, or send Debbie uh, a DM because um, we've got somebody who did that and uh, we're going to, at, the, at some point, uh, address some of those issues. Um, so we, we, we can talk about your issues without talking about you. Um, so we'd be happy to, we'd be happy to, uh, you know, address your questions. Just leave a comment here or, or, um, leave a comment on Debbie's page, um, because we do this live on, on, on her page or on, a, or on the YouTube channel. Uh, and to get to the YouTube channel, just type in, uh, we'll talk with Debbie and Will and subscribe and share and click the notification bell. So, you know, when I upload and, um, or even the podcast, just, I mean, if you type in real talk with Debbie and Will, all that stuff shows up in Google. Google's amazing and scary, <laughs> very scary. Um, so we'd like for you to enter into the conversation. You know, we could, I mean, I talk for a living so I can talk forever. That's kind of my job. Um, but the idea is we want you, we want you to enter into the conversation. We want this to be a conversation. We don't, this isn't a class. There won't be a test later or any pop no. quizzes. This is a conversation and we'd like to have that conversation with you. That's what we're saying. All right, listen, it's about time to get out of here and make room for somebody else. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something. Love somebody. And for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We'll see you when we see you. Love you. Peace. Peace. We're out.